Today we're going to be testing and reviewing Sinopoly lithium iron phosphate prismatic cells from a new Amazon seller. So they sell kits to build 12 volt batteries and they even come with the bus bars and the terminal screws. So it will be very interesting to see how well these things work. These are small cells, these are like 40 amp hour and they have a really great charge and discharge rate. It's like um, 1C charge and 3C discharge and look at how it's padded. So, so far so good, but we need to hook these things up and see how they balance and see how well they work under a load. We have 3.3 volts, 3.3 volts, 3.3, 3.3. So these are good. We don't have to parallel them or do anything silly. We just connect them in series. And because these cells are so small, I'm going to use some uh, double-sided VHB tape to connect them together. Now I've done this so many times now that I have a little way of doing it. So I lay the first cell flat and then I add VHB tape to the corners, just like that. And then peel off the backing and then mount them on top of each other. And then press them down. And then here's the final cell. This whole process took like five minutes. So it's pretty easy. So now this battery is done so we can add the bus bars and also add our balance lead and some wires so that we can charge and discharge it. First you want to add your bus bars just like this. And usually I start with the main negative cable and the balance lead negative on the main negative of the battery. And now that we have the first negative connected we need to connect the first cell positive which is pink. So I'm going to take the pink and I'm going to connect it to the first cell positive and it's going to be on top of the bus bar because I want the bus bars to be flush with the battery terminals. So we're going to screw this one in right here first. And then this one doesn't need a connector so you just screw a terminal screw right inside. And now that we've done the pink wire we can do the blue wire which is second cell positive. And then I'll just add the other ones, you guys get the idea. And then we have the final fourth cell positive and the main battery positive cable. Now that the bus bars and balance leads are connected, let's check the battery voltage. And we have 13.26. And we can also test the balance cable. So we're going to plug it into our balancer and all of the voltages are correct. And you can balance it right now if you want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to discharge it and see how these cells work. We have an inverter and a watt meter connected to a heat gun and we're using 159 watts and we're going to discharge this battery. We're also going to watch the balance of the cells when it's under load to see if the internal resistance of one is different. Also, when we discharge it, if one reaches the low state of charge faster than the other cells, we'll know that they're not matched by capacity capacity. So this will be an interesting test. So I really didn't want to wait forever for it to discharge through this fuse line. So I unfused it and I have these clamps and we're pushing around 372 watts and the wires are getting pretty hot. But the voltage drop across each cell is within 0.01 of each other. So the internal resistance of these cells is matched very nicely. They did a good job with that. Now we have some test results. So if you look at the balance of the cells, they're within 0.1 volts of each other. And the second cell is the lowest voltage of them all. So this has the smallest capacity out of all four of them. Also, I checked the watt hour capacity while discharging and we used 113 watt hours when I had these wires connected and 183. So it's 296 watt hours combined. And out of 510 total, we got 0.57. And if you think about 70% state of charge down to 13% state of charge, we were supposed to get 57% of the total capacity. And we did. Like if you calculate all these numbers, you get the exact numbers. So the rated capacity is true. Now that we understand its discharge characteristics, we're going to charge it up and see what the balance is at a high state of charge. All right, guys, we're practically done charging it. It's at 14.6 at the charger and 14.49, 14.5 at the battery. But one of the cells hit 3.73. So the first cell is charging up pretty quickly and the second cell which I thought was the lowest capacity is still the lowest voltage one. So that means that these cells need to be balanced. But for me and what I'm trying to do with this test battery for other systems, I'm going to be top balancing. And to summarize whether you should top or bottom balance, if you're going to be using strange chargers that you cannot set the upper voltage limit and you're hanging out at a higher state of charge, then what you want to do is top balance or bring it up to a high state of charge and then balance the cells like I'm doing right now. 
if you have a charger or a solar charge controller that you can change the upper voltage limit and you want to hang out at a lower state of charge and charge and discharge somewhere around 50%, then you want to bottom balance the cells. But please check out my other videos where I go more into depth with nice pretty pictures. And now the cells are all balanced and it only took 46 minutes. And considering that we're top balanced and we never balanced these before, that is really good. That is a lot faster than my other lithium iron phosphate battery packs. So now we're going to discharge it a final time and see how much power it can store. So now we have some test results going from 100% down to 0% practically. We're at 11.95 and we have 523.7 watt hours. And we can check the balance. So they're off by 0.1 volts, which is totally acceptable considering we just top balance these cells. So that's really good too. And this is a 100 amp hour and this is a 40 amp hour. So look at the size difference. This thing is so tiny and light. So this battery was actually pretty impressive and I can actually recommend it. But understand that if you build these, you need to watch some of my other videos that talk more in depth about some of the safety features that you need to build into it. And if you guys want to learn more about whether or not to use a BMS and top and bottom balancing and what the difference is, please watch my other videos because those tell you so much more about using lithium iron phosphate prismatic cells. But yeah, it's a super simple project. You can do it at home and it's super fun. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I'll have links down below. And they sent this out to me, so I guess this video is semi-sponsored, but they didn't pay me for this video. Video. And I was really curious to find good Sino Poly cells that you don't have to buy on AliExpress or eBay or something. So I'm pretty stoked that we actually have these available. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys found this useful. And please comment below if you have any questions and I'll talk to you later. Bye.